If you search for images of parabolic trikes on Google, 90-95% of the trikes out there are wrong by design. By the end of this video, you will understand why. Welcome back to the Parameter Geometry Classroom. This is a complete guide to understand the design and features of parameters. Now we have an exciting time. There will next few chapters we will discuss the design of parameter trikes. Stay with us. Now I'm going to show you a slideshow of probably 20 trikes that I found on Google, just a quick search, and try to find one thing that all these trikes have in common, and later I'll explain why that thing is wrong. I mean, these are all kinds of trikes, two-seater, single-seater, big one, lightweight, doesn't really matter. Sorry for some blurred pictures. This is what the Google result gave me. There are some top brands, there are some unknown, some homemade. Many, many designers just make, keep making the same mistake all over again and again and again. Have you spotted what was the feature that all these trikes had in common? It's this one on the next slide. So all of the trikes had a 90 degree angle between the wheelbase and the paramotor itself. That means in the takeoff phase, the motor is vertical and the thrust line is horizontal. And this is wrong. It may sound intuitive because yeah, you want the thrust line to be horizontal to have the fastest acceleration wrong this setup will slow you down on takeoff it will make the takeoff less efficient less reliable less predictable and definitely decrease your success rate on takeoffs i will explain every single step during the takeoff phase and you will see how this design is completely wrong from the beginning to the end so let's start with the inflation so a normal foot launch takeoff what you do is you pull on the ace right and that's how you inflate the glider you don't need to blow into the glider at all you just inflate on the ace but that's not the case with this setup because what happens you create an immense amount of airflow very turbulent and it goes straight into the glider so the glider actually gets inflated with very very turbulent air and it takes a lot more time to inflate it properly now the next phase it's even worse in the next phase it gets even worse now we have the glider inflated it builds a noise wall the glider is perfectly vertical being exposed to all the airflow generated by the prop you will stay stuck in this position for a few seconds because you apply the maximum thrust to accelerate but this acts as a brake it's a massive big wall completely exposed to the wind to the airflow from the prop slowing you down you're stuck for a few seconds until eventually the thrust of the of the motor overrides the brake of the glider yet that glider is exposed to that to that turbulent air for a very long time it comes comes up twitchy tweaky twisted and rarely comes up straight above your head because it's simply inflated through a turbulent air but this is not the end of the story it will be actually wrong in the air as well so now okay luckily you succeeded to bring the glider up you have it above your head you were lucky to come at 12 o'clock you accelerate into takeoff now right after takeoff what happens your front wheel gets lifted obviously you need the front wheel slightly higher so you're ready for for a smooth landing that means your front wheel is lifted you are nicely comfortably reclined true but the prop is reclined as well so the thrust line is pointing upwards if you haven't checked our previous chapters please see chapter 18 and 19 where i discussed why a reclined paramotor is first dangerous and secondly terribly inefficient this is not the way you want to fly you want the prop to give you thrust to push you forward and the glider to give you lift upwards now what is the solution obviously this setup having 90 degrees between your prop and the wheelbase 
was wrong during the initial inflation, during the acceleration, and also during the flight. The solution is so, so simple. It's just don't make it 90 degrees. This is the wrong setup. This is the good one. Just incline the motor by 10 degrees or even 15 degrees or even 20 degrees forward. Now what happens is, and obviously on takeoff you will be a little bit uncomfortable because you're kind of a bit with your body a bit too much forward, but that's not a point. There will be so many benefits throughout the whole takeoff and flight experience. Let's have a look at it again. Inflation. Put simply, as the motor is inclined, the thrust line is pointing a little bit downwards. But So yes, you're losing a little bit of that forward element of that forward vector of the thrust line. But yeah, it, it doesn't really matter. You're losing maybe 10% of it. But the prop wash goes above your glider. So your glider is not inflated by the turbulent air, but it's inflated by simply pulling on the ace just like you do when you do it foot launched. Not disturbed, not tangled, not twisty, nicely inflated. It gets nicely inflated as you keep moving, the glider is coming, coming, coming up. Eventually, the glider will come and higher and it will be exposed to that turbulent air. Let's have a look at that. Now, at this moment, the glider is exposed to that turbulent air but it already has the forward momentum. It's not a wall. It's already a glider that it's coming up. It already has the speed. It's fully inflated, nice and stable, and it just come, shoots through the turbulent air quickly. Simple as that. You can't avoid the turbulence, but you want the glider to stay as short in the turbulent air as possible. Inflate it, make it moving, and make it cut through the turbulence quickly. Simple as that. Now, even in flight, it's going to be much better. In flight, what happens now? The front wheel gets lifted because you need it lifted for landing. And the prop that was previously kind of inclined forward with the thrust line pointing a little downward, the prop will actually stay nicely vertical and the thrust line nicely horizontal. This is the most efficient position for the thrust line. It's nice and safe for landing and it's very comfortable because your back will get reclined a, a little bit. So you, are, you, you do have your comfortable in-flight position. It's so simple. Just make it not 90, make it 80 degrees, make it 75. So simple, so amazing. And yet so many do it wrong. Seriously, Google for parameter trike images vast majority of them have it wrong. There are a few that did it right. So, final summary. Smooth and fast inflation in the initial phase of takeoff because you just pull on the ace, that's it. Glider is fully pressurized by the time it cuts through the, through the prop wash and it cuts through the prop wash quickly because it already has this forward momentum coming upwards you have much higher success rate to get the glider above your head at 12, not 11, not one o'clock, but nice at nice at 12 o'clock straight above your head. You have faster acceleration because you don't fight the glider acting as a brake. You reach your takeoff speed a lot faster. Simple, just try it. In flight, thrust line is in the horizontal position being the most efficient. Front wheel is lifted for for safe landing and pilot's back is comfortably reclined. While this is being so simple and there are just benefits to this solution, no real disadvantages at all, yet I would say 95% of the trikes out there have it wrong. I have found two or three that did it right. One is the Scout one, then is the Parajet, and then I found one fresh breeze that was nice but the photo wasn't good so I couldn't use it. Let's stick to the topic of trikes for a while. I did a lot of research on trikes. Uh, I, I, I tested some real wheel steering and inclining to the side and all kinds of crazy, crazy stuff. And there is one thing that I have found that the most trikes have wrong. Uh, let's discuss it in the next chapter. So hit the subscribe button so you don't miss that. Hit the like button, share it. I will be very, very grateful for that. Thank you very much. See you next time.